This is a revised analysis of the downward acceleration of the World Trade Center Building 7, which collapsed in a manner suggestive of controlled demolition on September 11, 2001. My earlier analysis, which is posted on YouTube under my own name, was based on the best information I had at the time, but I now have been able to improve on my results using new information available in the recently released NIST final report on Building 7. Despite the accurate data available to NIST, their final report makes dishonest claims about the rate of fall of the building. I'll come back to the NIST report at the end of this video. In my earlier video analysis, I used the width of the building, which is known to be 100 meters, to calibrate the scale of the image. In this remake, I've used the vertical spacing of the windows visible as horizontal streaks on the face of the building. From this, I was able to identify the 29th floor, which is listed in the NIST document as having a height of 683 feet 6 inches, measuring from some baseline which they don't specify. They have the blueprints, I don't, but I take this measurement to be reliable. The other measurement they give is the height of the roof line, which they state is 925 feet 4 inches above their baseline. The difference of these two heights converted to meters is the basis for the calibration of this video. The actual measurements were done exactly as before. The cursor was placed on the corner of the building and marks were placed frame by frame. The built-in functions of the Physics Toolkit software capture the positions and times of these marks in a data table from which it computes and displays various kinds of graphs. I'm here plotting velocity as a function of time. The slope of this kind of graph gives the acceleration. Notice that the data hovers close to zero for nearly a second, and then it drops precipitously. From the moment of the drop, the slope of the line appears essentially constant for about two and a half seconds. By marking two data points, the program can compute the best straight line to fit the data for the linear portion of the graph. The slope of the line is the acceleration. Down here at the bottom, the computed acceleration is shown minus 9.885 meters per second squared. The minus sign indicates downward acceleration. The acceleration of gravity for New York City is 9.802 meters per second squared, so the measured acceleration is within 1% of the acceleration of gravity. Given the graininess and size of the image, 1% is not a significant difference from the actual acceleration of gravity, so the most accurate way to characterize the result is to say acceleration of the building is indistinguishable from freefall. I'm a high school teacher. I teach my students better lab practice than this demonstrates here. In this video, I have measured the velocity profile and the instantaneous acceleration of the building with orders of magnitude better precision than NIST, and I did it with Zero Budget, a free software tool commonly used in high school physics classes, and a copy of a video downloaded from the internet. I know the guys at NIST are not incompetent. What I'm left to conclude is that their only purpose in even mentioning free fall is to muddy the water and derail the discussion. The rate of fall of the building is an embarrassment to the official theory. Free fall is a small detail in the whole complex analysis, but it is not a minor issue. Buildings cannot fall at free fall through themselves, because even a weakened building requires energy to break up the pieces, crush the concrete, and push things around. When the falling building pushes things, the fall is not free. The things push back, and the reaction forces will measurably slow the descent of the building. This is why one would reasonably expect crumbling structures to come down in a tumbling, halting, irregular manner. In short, the evidence is clear. We are witnessing not the collapse of a building, but its demolition. And we have received not a report from an independent scientific investigation, but a cover-up by a government agency.